What's up guys, in my next build video I'll be using a bunch of half lap joints and instead of doing the typical YouTube thing where I rattle off other ways you can cut these if you can't use the method I'm using, I figured I'd go ahead and make a whole separate video showing lots of ways to cut these using a handful of different tools. These are some of the strongest joints in woodworking, really easy to cut and can be used so many different ways. Obviously I can't show every way to use them here, but the methods for cutting are all the same and can be used for so many different applications. For video's sake, so I can just cut each way once, I'll be cutting the joint into a piece of inch and a half thick material for a piece of three quarter inch material to lap in. Of course, when working with two pieces the same size, you would just cut out the notch in both pieces. But up first is the circular saw. In a lot of videos, people consider this the beginner or budget friendly way to do things, which really is still true. But in this case, it's all about the size of the material you're cutting into as well. If you have some long, heavy material, it just makes sense to take the tool to the material in those cases, which a circular saw is great for. And you'll see you can still get great results. I just set the blade at half the thickness, and then for my two outside cuts in this case, I'll use a speed square to make sure those cuts are nice and square. And then just make several more passes to clear away most of the material in the middle. You could completely clear it with the saw, but here I just did enough to where I could finish breaking the middle out and clean it up with a chisel. Now to check the fit. A bit snug, and if I was doing this for something I actually cared about being nice, I'd probably fine tune the fit with a scraper or some sandpaper, but in this case we'll go ahead and just hammer it home. Better too tight than too loose, huh? Now for the next way, we'll jump over to the miter saw. Not every saw, but most will have a depth stop feature similar to this, with some sort of stop that flips down and then you can fine tune the depth with the bolt. But you'll see here when we have the blade stopping at half the thickness of the material, the round blade isn't going to cut all the way to our line in the back. So to fix this, you can just add a spacer block to pull your material further away from the fence. Just like the circular saw, you can cut just enough to finish cleaning it up with a chisel, but here I'm demonstrating just using the saw to completely clear it out. Time wise, the difference is probably negligible, it'll just be personal preference. I should have stopped sooner to show it better, but it was just my natural process to keep going, and what I'm doing here is moving the material sideways to flatten the bottom. Even though I completely cleared all the material away, the bottom isn't totally flat because of the alternate tooth bevel on the blade. So you can either do what I did to take those grooves out, use the chisel, or really if you're doing something where the backside isn't visible, as long as your piece fits flush on the outside where it matters, you could just leave it as is. Or a third really great option to flatten the bottom after using a circular saw or miter saw would be with a mortising bit in the router, but I'll show that later. That's more like what we want in terms of fit this time though. Moving on to the table saw for the next three options, and when it comes to setting up for all these cuts I'm showing, I'm simply using my actual material to set everything. Besides that, it just comes down to taking accurate measurements. One thing I absolutely love for laying out joinery though are these Inker T rules. You can get super precise with these. Microjig sent me this contraption a while ago and I've never actually used it until now, but it's specifically made for stuff like this. You set your material under it, and then the other side automatically adjusts to half the thickness. I already used my actual wood to set the height here, but using the jig to verify and it was right on exactly where I would want it. So if you're into cool gadgets like this, it seems to work well, or you can just use your actual material. This first way on the table saw is again just making multiple passes with a single blade, which I think you guys get the point by now. One thing different though is flat tooth table saw blades are a lot more common and I have several different ones. So no cleanup needed here with the table saw. Something else worth mentioning is stop blocks. If you're cutting multiple pieces, it's always worth it to set up a stop block to make sure they're all exactly the same.
Moving on to my favorite way to cut leaves, and that's with a Freud dado set on the table saw. But like I said earlier, as long as the size of my material allows me to safely do it on the table saw. But as you can see, it's just so much faster, and once again, a nice flat bottom with the dado stack. Option three on the table saw only works for when you're cutting lap joints on the end of your material, but it's a really great method as it's only two cuts. The first will be just like before with the piece lying down and using the miter gauge. Then we're going to stand the material up and raise the blade to finish the cut. But a limitation here is the height, which you can say I almost have maxed out here on my saw. To safely make this cut, here's my not so fancy, but gets the job done tenoning jig. It's just three pieces of plywood cut to straddle the table saw fence that you can clamp pieces to and run them through vertically. Being only two cuts and not taking the time to set up a dado set, you can see this is the fastest method by far, but again only works for the end cuts. Jumping over to the bandsaw, and just like that last one on the table saw, this is only going to be for cuts on the end as well. But in my case with a saw like the Laguna 14BX, I'm able to cut way wider joints than what I'd be limited doing on the table saw. And with stop block set up, and I believe I have a 14 TPI blade on here, it's another great way to get clean and repeatable cuts. Moving on to the next tool, here's the router table. Using a 3 quarter inch mortising bit here, we're able to clear away the same amount of material as we were using a dado stack on the table saw. Notice I did switch over to 3 quarter inch material though, so I can get it done in one pass. Of course with thicker material it would still work, I just want to do it in multiple passes. But the router does leave the cleanest cut by far out of all the other methods, it's like perfectly smooth. To cut the mating piece for this, we'll go ahead and use a handheld router with the same 3 quarter inch Freud bit. Just like with a circular saw, using a speed square as a guide, this is another great example of being able to take the tool to your material instead of trying to unsafely wrangle large items up on these other stationary tools. Of course there are even more ways to cut these, but this is just a great example to show that there's always other ways to get the same thing done and you can still get great results no matter your tool set but hopefully you were able to take something away from this to use in your own projects. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already to see these actually used in my next project. Until then, take care.